Good morning, everybody. Uh, a glass to city chambers. And good afternoon, everyone there's that too in Malawi. My name is Natasha Maluza. I am the engagement and communications officer here at the Edward at the Scotland Malawi Partnership. This meeting is starting right now at 11 o'clock. I just want to let everybody on Zoom that know that the meeting is being recorded. So hopefully we have your consent by joining this meeting. Everyone in the room at the moment, we have the owl, which is, we have two owls actually, which is placed right up here at the top of the table and one down at the table as well. The owl is the camera and the microphone. So please, when you're speaking, please look into the owl so that our viewers online will actually hear us and see us as well. There are no planned fire drills today, so happy day. The toilets are right outside just on the same level. So when you go outside, take a left, and when you walk into the glass door, just walk straight, you see a huge painting, and the toilet will literally be right opposite the painting. We have our Wi-Fi today, and the Wi-Fi will be up here as well, so in case anybody needs to uh, go online. And if you do want to go online, make sure you get onto Twitter and follow us as well in Malawi, and you can tweet about this meeting as well during the meeting. And now I'll hand over to our newly appointed CEO, Stuart Brown. <laughs> Thank you, um, Natasha. Um, office of the Lord Provost of Glasgow, Deputy High Commissioner Justice Atema, Honorary Consul Dr. Peter West, Chair Dr. Yona Matema, friends, all protocol observed. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here in Glasgow City Chambers. We're here by the grace and favour of the Lord Provost of Glasgow Councillor Jacqueline McLaren, who had hoped to be with us today, but unfortunately, um, Christmas um, time brings its own gifts of colds and COVID and so on, as we know, um, and unfortunately, the Lord Provost is unwell and sends uh, her apologies. But she has sent uh, a letter that she uh, is very keen to <clears throat> shared with everybody at this forum. Dear members, delighted to send good wishes to today's Scotland Malawi Partnership SMP Further and Higher Education Forum, chaired by Dr. Yona Matemba in my capacity, the Lord Provost and Honorary Co President of the SMP. As Dr. Matemba recently described in his Scotland Malawi Partnership lecture on decolonizing the curriculum, some of Glasgow's street names and buildings are connected to the city's historic links with slavery. It's essential that we learn from the past, and I was honoured to host a civic reception in September for the Coalition for Racial Equality Black History Month launch event, when we heard from Professor Emeritus Sir Jeff Palmer and other key academics, artists and activists. One of Glasgow's sons, Dr David Livingston, was of course central to links between our two nations, and we recognise that this is the 150th anniversary year of his death. Not many miles from here in Blantyre, Scotland, I know that the Livingston birthplace have rightly done a great deal in the museum to recognise the Malawians and other nationals uh, of other African countries who did so much to support Livingston's travels and the collective nature of the effort. As the National Civic Society Network coordinating, representing and supporting the many people-to-people -people links between our two nations, it's that spirit of collective effort which is at the heart of the Scotland Malawi Partnership's work. The SMP is all about bringing people together to encourage collaboration, produce duplication of effort, provide a space for the sharing of lessons learned, and offer support and peer to peer learning. Malawi led and member led, the SMP creates opportunities to celebrate the collective successes of members and their partners for mutual encouragement recognizing that there are many challenges in both nations. <laughs> Forums such as this one are characterized by participants leaving egos and logos outside the door in favor of a collective effort. It's exciting that as part of today's meeting, we have a combination of long-standing members with deep roots in both nations, as well as participants relatively new to the FEHE Forum including Malawian postgraduate students who are studying here in Scotland. This is a brilliant mixing pot of perspectives, 
bilateral, multidisciplinary, and multi-generational expertise, energy, and experience. Importantly, with an approach which has at its essence friendship between people. I know that the SNP is also as committed as ever to meaningful, equitable, and dignified school partnerships between our two nations. I'm extremely proud that, in spite of the pressures on teachers and learners brought by COVID, Glasgow schools continue to be very much involved in partnership with Malawi, and I look forward to working yet more closely with the SNP in the coming year. My thanks and respect to all of you working in further higher education with its multiple demands, continuing to protect space for your incredibly important and impactful work <clears> in these <throat> dignified people-to-people -people relationships between Scotland and Malawi. Thanks and best wishes, the Right Honourable, the Lord Provost, Councillor Jacqueline McLaren. And I'd like to hand over to um, the Forum's <laughs> Chair, Professor Yolanda Samba. Thank you so much, uh, colleagues, uh, both here in this chamber and those online with us. Our old friends, many of you here, and others, new friends. I'm always excited when I see our colleagues and some students who come from Malawi and us here. It's very exciting. Some of you may not know me yet, or may have heard my name. Uh, you're meeting me, and Madam I will be that is <laughs> uh, But we've been here in Scotland for a while, and we welcome you here to study, or if you're coming to work or stay, you're most welcome, and we can talk more about that later. In a special way, I'd like to welcome all our presenters who have come today, our partner universities and higher education institutions here. And I'm also made aware that we have our colleagues from us, our sister organization in Malawi, who might be here as well. But also, I just want to get recognition our Deputy uh, High Commissioner, uh, Mrs. Agnes Batemba, who might be online, and her colleagues from High Commission. I just want to acknowledge her because of her interest in everything else going on uh, uh, about higher education in Malawi. We've had many conversations about this and so pleasing to see her here or attending online and her colleagues from the High Commission. And I just want to share quite quickly my own uh, interest. I, I've been involved with my partnership for quite a long time and I think at this point I must also acknowledge and congratulate Stuart Brown for recently being appointed as our CEO for the Scott and my partnership and my personal welcome and congratulations to you. And I think why I'm mentioning this is important because Stuart has been involved with us, uh, us, I mean, Malawians. Remember that there's a diaspora group here in, Malawi, in, in Scotland as well, and it's important to recognize that. And some of our students or colleagues who come from Malawi might find that quite interesting about the Association of Malawians in Scotland, and you might want to get in touch with them to find out other things that they also do. So I'd like to welcome you all here as we continue this journey. And I think the Scotland Malawi Partnership. This may underline this word partnership, an impossible moment, partnership. I talk more about this in a much more critical way about partnership. And then I think what we're doing here is precisely to cement this partnership, to see how each of the two nations can benefit from one another and each other. It's not a one-way track of benefit. The benefit, the mutual benefit. What Malawians can benefit from, from colleagues from Scotland in higher education, but equally also what Scottish colleagues can benefit from my own colleagues in Malawi. And I think if we take that as a step forward in what we do in the Fair and Higher Education Forum, and I think that will be very, very important. And so today I will be very much welcome and so pleasing and excited to want to hear more voices, especially from our colleagues from Malawi and even some of our Scottish friends who are here. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, Emma has been with us for a long time and I know her quite, quite well. And to see that they're able to continue this sort of discussion and also projects, of course, that come out of this. To me, projects should not be the beginning of the conversation, but an end of a fruitful collaboration. So the, the idea is I'm going to find someone to collaborate. <laughs> but the idea is to say I'm going to find a friend in Malawi, a friend in Scotland. And out of that conversation, friendship, then something comes up. So if, if a collaboration, a partnership in terms of a grant comes through, and that's a good outcome for everyone. But that's not the beginning. So we don't come and say, what are you going to give me? But rather, let's create a friendship. And I hope that's the spirit in this room. And I hope that's the spirit of the Federal and Higher Education Forum, of which I am the chair. And so I just want to uh, uh, to say that um, those of who are online, please just make sure you, you mute yourselves until we get to that point where you are contributing just to avoid feedback 
And thank you so much for guiding us about these owls. This is the second time I've met the owls, and you know there are two of them. There are two of them in the room. The first time I was told an owl, I say, where is it? I'm looking up in the tree because I know owls are in the trees, and I was told they are right there on the on the table with you. <laughs> and now we have two of them, so I hope they're able to capture our voices and also our video and the pictures as well. So that's really quite exciting. To see where technology is taking us. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it, it gives me so great, so much great pleasure because um, when I chair these sort of sessions and, and I, I hear the, the different ideas and voices and, and, and thoughts and discussions around what we can do together, I mean, really, this is to me the most interesting part about it. Let me just say something quickly. And I think the Deputy uh, High Commissioner, uh, Mr. Sakinis Patemba, might agree more. And I think there is a lot that can be done. There's something that already begin being done. I'm aware of some universities that already have partnerships that are going on. Glasgow, I'm aware. I'm aware. Southside, I'm aware. St. Andrews, I'm aware of this. Dundee, I'm aware. This is, uh, Edinburgh, I'm also aware it's happening. But I think for me, and I've said this in previous um, uh, forums, I would like to see more in Malawi, especially I'm now speaking to my colleagues in Malawi, especially those working for MAST and so on and so forth, and Chancellor College. When you go back, please encourage not just only your colleagues at your university, these publicly funded universities, encourage your colleagues in these private universities. So <laughs> private universities in Malawi are key to what's going on. You and I know that the majority of students in Malawi, our own children, cousins, nephews, are going to these private universities. And they have been accredited by the chair. So they exist to offer these degrees. But in many, in many cases, they are left out in these discussions. And I just want to encourage you to include them in these discussions because believe it or not, these are the people that are, end up working in our universities, working in our offices, working in, in every place because this is where the training is going on. The universities, the public universities, Zuzu, University of Malawi, and so on and so forth, can only take so much. The majority of them are in these private, private universities. And I just want us to encourage one another, including our colleagues here in Scotland, if I can emphasize that, please, when you're looking for partners, go beyond the obvious ones that you have already partnered with. Mm -hmm. Go and look for these private universities who are eager to partner with others elsewhere so that they too can be empowered and they can empower you too. And you can learn other things that you might not maybe get from these publicly funded uh, universities mm -hmm. who already get, get some, some government sub subvention and support. But these other ones don't, but they're there and still training our, our students. I want to stop there because I don't want to dominate. My job today is simply to uh, lead and guide uh, our, 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 our meeting today. <clears throat> One of the things that I'd like to do is to welcome our um, Malawian colleagues who are here and, and there's a slot here that I'd like to hear some voices from you. And I've got a few names and I know one of the things I didn't do was to do the initial introductions. But here's the thing, when you are to speak, tell us about yourself briefly, you know, who you are, where you come from, that kind of thing. We know you come from Malawi or you come from Scotland. I don't mean that at all. But by the way, one of the questions that uh, I've lived in Scotland for 20 years, for those of you who might not know that background. And I've been in this chamber, the various uh, rooms before, many, many times before. And one of the questions that always comes, is less now, which is a good thing, is a question to say, who are you? I say, well, I'm Yona Matemba, say, where you come from? And I'll say, well, I come from Malawi. How long have you been here? So the, the questions keep on adding. <laughs> and this is what I've learned. So maybe it's a trick to offer from Malawi. Don't let these multiple questions continue from our Scottish friends, yeah. <laughs> right? When they ask the first or the second, it's fine because we're getting to know each other. When they get to the third and the fourth, stop and ask them questions too. Yeah. So who are you? How long have you been here? <laughs> That's what friendship is, isn't it? <laughs> it's not the one with traffic. <laughs> okay. I want to ask uh, Natasha. <laughs> Natasha works for sort of my partnership. I want to speak to her, but uh, could you tell us more about your involvement here, but also, again, your experience as a Malawian academic or Malawian being here in, in Scotland and the kind of uh, right. kind of work and how that's going to be. So, as Yona just said, my name is Natasha. I am from Blantyre in Malawi. I was born and bred in Blantyre. I moved to Scotland in 2021. I came here to do my further education, I guess, in um, digital marketing. So I did my digital marketing actually just up the road at Strathclyde University. And it was exciting times for me because my background was communications, but unnecessarily marketing. But I, I guess I sort of grew into marketing because of my past jobs 
working in the corporate sector for the bank. So after I finished my studies here, I always started looking for jobs and ended up at Scotland Malawi Partnership. Actually, funny thing is, um, with this job, my sister who lives in Malawi is the one that sent me the vacancy. <laughs> 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 I don't need to see this, but I this is perfect job for you. Like, hmm, okay. And it's like, guess what? The Malawi is a good job. I'm like, how? How is that even possible? Because that was already a year in at Strathclyde, and I didn't really, I didn't know much about any association in terms of Scotland, Malawi. And I, I, I wasn't, I guess, well, sort of educated on it because it didn't come across anything that I was doing at Strathclyde. So I said, okay, fine, let me try and apply for it. Mm -hmm. And I applied for the job, and immediately as I'm looking at the website, I see a, a familiar face, which is Chad Morton. And Chad actually used to teach at the primary school, he used to attend um, in Blanca in my younger years, obviously. And I said, oh my gosh, this is pretty cool. I might actually want to work here. So I ended up getting the job. And so a little background as well, because I was working in the corporate industry before um, moving to Strathclyde. I, like, so previously before that as well, I still a lot of outreach work in terms of working with um, young girls in public schools in Malawi. But it was sort of a thing where it's still on the side, not necessarily a main job or anything like that. And working in the nonprofit organization sector is something I always wanted to do, but I, just, I guess I never had the opportunity to do it. And I am so young, I might not look young, but I'm so young. And I thought, oh, maybe I'll start doing nonprofit work later on in my later years. And I said, Natasha, it's your time now. This is the time to make a change, especially with people back home as well. So this, this could be an opportunity for you, and you just don't know where we lead to. And that's why I guess I joined the SFB. And one of the, I guess, um, oh, the drawbacks of me living in Scotland is that I just, when I first moved, before I moved here, I remember thinking to myself, how do I even get a conversation? Where do I even start from? Obviously, the, the university is the first call because they should be able to look out for you. And Shatter was really, really good with that. But I also wanted a community. And I came here just post COVID. Mm -hmm. And it was just tough. People were not having online classes. I was just sitting on my desk 24 7. Even my my flatmates at the time, because I was living on campus, we just we were all from different countries all over the world. And we just didn't even know how to interact with each other. And you think it would be easy, but it was just really hard. And I wanted something familiar. And just, you know, just, it was hard. But I think what there's a gap there as well, because even though Strathclyde was great with getting accommodation, but it would have been nice for them to just be like, you know, um, we have, I, I guess I did ask them about uh, Malawi. I said, no, no, since you a Scotland Malawi partnership uh, message, you must have got one. I said, must, I must have missed it. And I think I probably would have wanted like an advocate on the campus or someone to push me towards trying to find Malawi <laughs> something like, or something like that. I guess, hopefully that makes sense. But I think that's my little story in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and, and that issue, uh, Natasha, has been raised before or in a way when Malawian students should come to these universities. And there's always this question say, how do I stop myself off, you know, getting integrated in this new community? Where are the Malawians and so on and so forth? Or where are the links? And so that is something that we need to take forward to. I think it has been raised before, but things that we were, uh, you know, looking into it again. But thank you so much for sharing those thoughts with you. Mr. Bosco Jinkan. Yeah. You're here. Oh, your time, sir. I didn't know I had to speak, but uh, yes, you were. <laughs> all right, <clears throat> great. So, as you say, my name is Bosco. Um, I'm with the University of Glasgow. I'm doing my PhD in education. Though I'm not really an education person, um, I'm here only my disciplinary study, um, looking at release control. Um, but um, I've only been here since um, September, and it was my first time out of Africa uh, coming here. Uh, but I think I'm quite grateful for the support that I got from the University of Glasgow. So I had been working with the supervisory team for a while before I came, and they really tried to make sure that I settled in well and connected into different friends. They tried to find Malawians, but I think they struggled to do that. So they took it upon themselves to, to make sure I settled in. So I think my story is a little bit different that I didn't really struggle to find accommodation or anything because of the support that I, I received from the survivors. They took initiative to say, oh, this is a new person, um, they're coming in. But one thing that I think I got to appreciate when I got here um, is the support system. And I'm glad to see that Sarah is actually online um, attending. She, she really helped me integrate very well. So I came here 
Now the new person never been outside of Africa. Some of the systems and the culture here is a little bit different. Mm. You know, we get through how do I get a train? I mean, in Malawi, there's no trains, right? How do you get a train? The public transportation system is very different. How do I get on a bus? Or how do I even find the bus? Oh no, you need to get an app. An app, right? How does it work? Well, it needs to have NFX. The phone I have doesn't have that, right? <laughs> okay, so how does this work? Or maybe you should have cash. All right, so how do I access cash? You know, a lot of questions to do with my integration here. Yeah. And thank thank God for it. Sarah, thank God for my supervisor. Like, we know, don't worry. So need to prepare, you know, the weather. The weather is very different since you've never been to such extreme weather situations and you're coming into September. You just thought it would get cold. So, you know, took me to a charity shop, bought me a sweater and I stayed warm. Gave me a few coins and I go. Oh, for now, we should be using actual cash to get on the bus. Very expensive. But that's how it was the first few days. And here, you know, I set up a bank account and what we say. I'm saying this because I think from the conversations that I've had with Tash and my friends at the SMP, integration here, you really need a lot of support. They come from a totally different context. We've heard of stories of people in a sleeping no, on the bus, staying really, really far. It's a challenge to get accommodation, but I think with a good support network, we have something to solve. And I'm and I'm glad that this is a space where we can start to have that conversation and think of a way in which we can support you know everyone coming here. And there's always I think there's, 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 there should be a way in which we might be able to know identify who's coming and get them to get the support they need. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, I think you raise an important point, you know, where do you start? And I think it's important. And these issues have been raised before. And it's interestingly because the earlier I want to mention the Malawi, uh, Malawians in Scotland. So there's an association. We are online. But the thing is, maybe we're not visible enough, but we are there. So if somebody just types Malawians in Scotland, it pops up. And there's a link there. The, I'm not involved in, in it anymore, but I know everybody there. And then there are links of people whom you can contact, especially if you come from Malawi. So. So if you're not aware, just go on the link now and there are people even after this, I can give you cards and stuff for people to, so that you go on and so on and so on and so on so forth. And I'm gossiping against my Scottish friends, uh, but it's a good gossip. Huh? Thank you very much, very much. Um, our next, if you could ask Mr. Ronald. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Mr. Peter, 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 how they talk to each other, how they are involved as a community, and how uh, they engage the community so that there is active participation uh, of the community as well as the sustainability of the project. Yeah, so uh, I want to ask you if you agree with this, how does that, uh, why is climate change coming in with your job? So my interest is the people, um, how the people are involved. Um, how the angels work with the people and how that uh, impacts on their uh, involvement in the project. Um, if I'm to talk about my stay here, I, I, I came here in 2013, September, and I've always told people that uh, it was a good experience for me, especially the first, the first month, because I didn't know anyone. Uh, from uh, another time I was staying in a hostel, in the best of uh, accommodation. And uh, my flatmates were from China, India, and you try to, you see, a, sorry, I was saying this, you see a black person coming, kind of trying to smile, you try to help him away, you don't want to talk to him, say, oh, okay. So that's the experience that I had, and it was bad until. I talked with a certain Mar uh, Marian who gave me the contacts of Africa School. Of oh, course, the association. Yeah. So it was now a matter of rolling myself in the room, wondering what I'm doing. Uh, but eventually, I did, uh, 
it's a credit that we've ever been now. It has been five since that time. <laughs> yeah, so I think that's why I said for now. But uh, I hope we'll talk about this a bit when I show the high thing for our participants and activity in the club. So, what exactly are we going to discuss here? Mm. And uh, already in Malawi, I worked with uh, Malawi University of Science and Technology. I teach there. And then I started to say, okay, well, this is the best product that I start to um, think about. What is it that we, we can offer as the academics? Well, I think there is a lot um, of discord between the academia and um, what I would say, the real world in both. What is happening in the community and what the academia is doing? Most of it, when an academic goes into the community, simply research, pure research, and it's a process, you just go there and extract information from the community and go back and write your paper and publish and everything. So, what my concern is probably need to find a way of bridging that kind of uh, gap. And this is something that I've noticed here. There's a lot of engagement between the industry. Uh, the academic, the academia, a lot of uh, involvement, uh, I mean, uh, partnerships between the non-governmental organizations, the government institutions, and the academia, which somehow in my life is a much about it. So I hope that's something that uh, as we go, um, we want to share. Let me stop there. Thank you very much, Mr. Jaji. I mean, you raised an important point about um, this forum. What's the purpose for this forum? Right. And I, I hope you're getting the purpose of this forum. Yeah. So the people who are gathered in this forum and those who are online, mm -hmm. they're all working in universities or involved with universities. The sort of my partnership facilitates this interaction, this discussion, what we're having right now. And precisely is to capture these ideas that you, you are suggesting. And then later on, some of our switch colleagues will also, those who work in projects, will also share what they're doing. It is through that sort of interaction. Sometimes it's this lack of knowledge that things exist. So you might think uh, if it doesn't exist because you maybe you never come across it, but maybe that in another format. And the, the, the purpose of this forum and the sort of a partnership for that for that matter is to make that connection so that we now know where the information is, where the links can be sought, uh, where partnerships potentially can exist. And this is where the facilitation. Uh, of those sort of uh, uh, engagements, and this is where it happens. So I'm glad you raised that, and I'm glad that you're paying keen attention to the people in this room and the people who are online, and then you're thinking about your own uh, work in Malawi and see where these sort of uh, partnerships and collaborations can happen. And this is precisely the reason why we, we are here. And we can talk more about specific things later, but just generally, that's the purpose of this, of this forum. Um, <clears throat> So thank you so much, uh, Mr. JJ. Uh, we appreciate that. I'm glad you found finally the, the, the Malawi Discordant uh, Association that finally found them. That's great. Thanks so much. Can I ask my editor, Gandhi? Please, it's your turn. Thank you so much. Um, I'm Elita Gambuniba, and I am studying at the University of Strathclyde. I'm in the third year of my PhD in social work. And the main focus of my PhD is amplifying the voices of children and young people with albinism in Malawi. So I'm applying participatory methods um, just to understand how they build their sense of belonging at different social ecologies. So at the family level, community level, and within education systems in Malawi. Um, I came here to Glasgow in 2021 in October. And we were just sort of still in the pandemic at that time. Um, it was my first time in the UK, but um, I'm from uh, Blanta and Lilongwe and Zoma. I've traveled a lot of places. I've lived a lot of places in Malawi. Um, but interestingly enough, um, I've had a lot of Scottish teachers in my, my education experience in Malawi. So I was taught by names like Mr. Mackay, Mr. McFarland, those kind of Scottish names. So, Scottish names. <laughs> so coming here, um, there was a sense already of 
Um, that strong Scottish Malawian partnership was, it's really there, it's very strong, even for someone who's grown up in Malawi, and we feel it even as we're coming here. So I'm quite keen um, to come to Glasgow and to study, and in terms of my experiences, um, I'm really grateful for uh, sort of the people who made an effort to support my exploration here. So I'm happy to see that um, Tracy Morris is online because she was one of the people who connected me to Malawians in uh, the university. And then I had others who made an effort to make sure that um, I was connected. Um, and that was really useful because for me, homesickness is a disease and I suffer a lot. So that first couple of months was very difficult for me being away from my family and being away from my home in uh, Lilongwe. Um, so having um, familiarity with Malawians really helped. And I see a big difference uh, between first year and now that I'm third year. I know a lot more Malawians um, in terms of the friends that I have and my experience is definitely much, much better. Um, another thing that I would say is just, um, even in terms of my research, I've definitely enjoyed um, being in conversation with others who not just are doing similar research, but have a familiarity with um, having done research in Malawi. So even just uh, Paul Lynch here, it's been great uh, talking with you and um, others who are like you simply because you understand the context that I'm speaking about. So I, I have these similar conversations with um, researchers from other countries, but it's really quite different than speaking to someone who's familiar with my context, who's familiar with um, you know, Malawi uh, in terms of the changes it's gone through over time, and particularly for the people uh, in Malawi. So that's why uh, for me, even as I'm reflecting, I feel that it is important to also connect um, um, students from, from who are based here with others who have also studied in Malawi. So they might be Malawian, they might be Scottish, they might be from elsewhere, but then they're familiar with the content. It really does change the conversation, and it also just changes the focus as well. It makes it more people-centered, uh, whether in terms of methodology and approaches, but also just, uh, I feel, yeah, it makes the, the intention different when someone knows uh, your country and has um, a respect for, for that context. So yeah, that's what I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate that. Thank you. Okay, the, then the final name is Mr. Uh, Daonga. Moase, uh, please. Thank you. Um, as I said, uh, Daonga and say Vuma from Daonga. I am a PhD student in my fourth year at the University of Strathclyde. I'm um, studying physical activity, uh, public health. So my, my research focus is on uh, physical activity, sedentary behaviors, and sleep among uh, uh, under five children in Malawi. Um, I work with the University of Malawi, uh, specifically at the Center for Social Research. So for the past five years, I've been uh, conducting research uh, in, in the field of public health. So uh, my PhD research is coming at the background of uh, the social economic transition, uh, which mostly affects uh, people how they behave. For example, uh, uh, higher social economic status uh, tends to people to get uh, to introduce their physical activity, uh, use of more motorized transportation. So we are looking at this young children to say because uh, a behavior and a better which is led in childhood is more likely to be sustained or trapped in the other group. So we want to see how uh, the the hours the their time they take to sleep or the time they spend uh, in various physical activities and also watching screens because those uh, behaviors affect their their health. Uh, so and then uh, you know physical inactivity is also linked to hypertension 
that I did with so or if they you can promote people to activate the areas in young children and reduce the screen times in young children where I can have um uh, a healthy population which will be key uh for um for human capital human capital development to transform Malawi at the moment the country uh has the Malawi 2063 agenda one of the enablers is in human capital development to transform Malawi into an upper middle income country by 2063 and to drive that again as a healthy population. But we want healthy population to start from the childhood years because these are the ones who drive the particular agenda. So, yeah, uh, in terms of moving to uh, social, I have. A very different experience from everyone because in 2016, 2017, I started a um, master of public health at the University of Nottingham uh, in England. And that time, I had a similar experience to what my, my friends have narrated about feeling isolated alone for a long period because you didn't know. Uh, Anyone from Malawi, I did not meet anyone from Malawi there. But when I moved here, I started in my PhD in 2020 October. I started the model because of COVID 19. And then later on, I was planning for data collection in Malawi. And then I only moved here last August. So I've been pretty much four or five months. Mm. When I was coming here, I knew Ada was already here because we worked together at the rest of Malawi and she connected me to a lot of people. So it was so easy yep. to integrate and like the experience. So as you were saying, I think knowing someone is so important to help someone uh, to, to settle down and not feel uh, lonely, especially here. So I think this forum. And indeed, uh, in this total and our partnership, I feel to be key to, to help uh, uh, students who are coming to study uh, this side. And again, I'm grateful for the support that I received from my supervisor, Professor John Lyle, who is also a member of the Sultan and our partnership, who, after looking for accommodation in short stay at the of he helped me uh, within a, a few weeks to get accommodation, which is good. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, sir. Would I invite Emmanuel? Uh, Please. All right. And my name is Emmanuel Gandhi. Yes. I am a student uh, doing um, economic at St. Andrews University. I'm in the second year. Uh, initially, I was trained like as a teacher at, at Polytechnic University in Bante, but I come from Nigeria. Okay. Yeah, that's all I can say. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's very short. <laughs> I want to do something which uh, I, I hadn't planned, but, but it, just with the conversations that are going, and I think it's worth it. We do have a few minutes to do that. We have heard from our colleagues from Malawi who are studying here and who are working in universities in Malawi. And it's quite interesting to hear their views on where they are and how they see as they come here. But I've got a question for you. And I would like you to share with us in the next five minutes or so. From the purpose of this meeting, uh, uh, Further and Higher Education Forum, what do you think you can contribute to this discussion? What are your thoughts about yourself, your testimony? biography about your institution back in Malawi. What do you think you can bring to the table here? Oh, we're on the table already. Other projects, thoughts, just beyond your PhD, beyond the, 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 the conversations you've told us, there's something you think that you could bring to these conversations. Can we get a chance to <laughs> yeah. Yeah. you won't get the same yeah. tool. <laughs> yeah. what, what they can bring and what you can bring when you know you. Yeah. I start with you because you're the first one. You you started the conversation, then you start that conversation. What can you bring to the table? <clears throat> okay, I 
I think what I can personally bring to the table because I like to see myself as a as a as an extrovert, sorry. So and um, obviously I, I have a digital marketing background, and a lot of students that come here, the only way we can connect is through the internet. And I think just having that creative um element to sort of um link people from Malawi to Scotland online before they even come here. I think I could possibly bring that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So those of you who are looking for partners or those looking for collaboration or looking for better discussions, they know there's someone who has got a particular skill and something that they can contribute to that better discussion. What about others? All right, I guess you can just make that. Yes, let's, let's go, let's go. <laughs> the train can run that way. <laughs> right, uh, thank you. I think, personally, there's three key things that, um, in the context of our conversation, I could bring. One, being a Malawian born and raised um, young person, um, was working both in the university, the NGO sector, and engaged with communities. I think I bring to the table the understanding of our context in Malawi, and the mission in which we do work. And we, by that, I mean the core strategy way of university um, practice and NGO engagement. Number two, um, I've been in a number of networks uh, engaging with different you know, institutions on issues of ethical partnerships. I'm a member of what we call the Sustainable Futures in Africa or Sustainable Futures for the Network, if you know it. And we've been working on trying to look into ethical partnerships to universities and practitioners and different people. I think that is something that I could contribute towards um, as a matter of conversation. How does that actually look like and whose benefit can we define our needs and interests? Um, then I think the third thing is to provide a listening here also on the interests that people have here, right? And see how that you know, could facilitate you know, meaningful partnerships between our and Scottish people. That's, those are three things that could be very helpful. Thank you so much. Very helpful. Yes, sir. Anyone? So it's not like a, a sport to know. No. Anyone? Who? Yeah. Um, yeah, please, Mr. Gadget. Uh, okay. Um, I think what, what I'll bring is really the, uh, the understanding that uh, as academics, I think the role that we have in bringing back the agency uh, in the rural communities uh, or the communities that we work with in, um, so that they, they take charge of their development uh, initiatives. Uh, I think it's uh, because my, my experience, I think from how we, uh, being someone who was born and raised in the village, has been that I think the the rule of communities are most agency. And uh, in most cases, um, they are being looked at as vulnerable people who need to be served. Mm -hmm. um, not people who can come on the table and uh, initiate something or contribute something mm -hmm. together and we fall back those partnerships yep. there. And uh, the good thing I think of this is that uh, certain gentlemen I think I'll join SMP uh, for my detention. And the University of Gandhi, Boyd of Gardens, um, uh, as well. So the community, the University of Gandhi, Boyd of Gardens, I talked to the curator there, um, expressing my interest, especially. Uh, we what they do, uh, they try to breach the nature of the you know, uh, using the rental gardens as, um, as a model where people must see that they are part of nature. Not that nature is there, people are there, and then you know, that kind of thing. So they want, the creator there wanted to have me in the team so that I bring the, that Malawi. Uh, experience in the project. So I feel like um, that's something that I think as academics in the this uh we can do, and that's something that I can contribute. I think uh, yes, that. Thank you very much. Any others? Yeah, I think um, 
I will therefore what Peter said, that I was raised uh, in the village. I was born the city of the place in the village. I have some context with and uh, navigating through my academic uh, education and career wise. I have that uh, uh, experience which I feel I can contribute in forums like this. And particularly recognizing that education is key in many aspects. And at the moment, uh, with the, the uh, Malawi going through some economic challenges, of course, uh, acknowledging that in global is that economic challenge, but uh, Malawi is at the disadvantage. And then, because of that economic issue, and then uh, the barrier is pushed to the poor or who don't have opportunities for higher education. Because, for example, at the uh, moment, uh, uh, like last week, there was a, a, a press release about Kansu University of Health Sciences increasing at least up to a million, uh, which would be roughly about 500 pounds uh, a year, which is a huge for majority of Malawi and 84 percent who will be in low areas who will be under for a dollar. Yeah, so with that context, I think if we have a fair education and then conclude that context and then uh, ways how we can discuss and help to alleviate some of this. Thank you very much. If there are no more comments from this side, let me just open this and ask our Scottish friends who are here. Uh, I'm not doing a, a division at all. I just the way I've laid my my discussion that I started with my own friends and so on. equally. Is there something that you guys bring to this table? You're on this table too. What can you bring to the table? You've heard what my colleagues have said. <laughs> what can you bring to the table? Now, don't preempt this because I've got uh, a session for those representing universities, so I'm going to ask you to speak briefly about that, but don't preempt that. But just the tables of this discussion just happened just here. What you bring to the table? So it's free for you. can start from you, Emma, going that way, or anyone can join. It's tricky to do it without describing, <laughs> the prop, you know, who we are, I think. Yeah. I, I, you could do that. No, is that okay? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. So my name's Emma Woods. I'm from Queen Margaret University. Queen Margaret University has a very strong memorandum of understanding with a very inspirational care home in Blantyre, Malawi, called Stecker run by God knows the Seco and Helen the Seco. I don't know whether but God knows is on the radio or not, so some people have heard of, of God knows. So we're very Malawian led. Through that relationship, I've had I'm interested in your student experiences. So I've had two young women who are from the care home have come and studied at my university, but lived with me and my family, which was around that you know, trying to make people feel okay. And then a young guy, Giff Thompson, who is very well known in this area, who lived with us for six years and did an undergrad and a master's. I just want to put a, a shout out for Blessings and Toko Kachali, because yeah. there is another group that's not Malawians in Scotland, yeah. but they have a prayer group that meets uh, the last Sunday of every month. And they were so helpful to the young Malawians that lived with me. Couldn't have done it without them, actually. So they are very welcoming and fun, yeah. actually. They're a really- And they live in Edinburgh, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, Edinburgh, Livingston, Livingston right. West Hall, the Falkirk, across, actually. So yeah, reach out to them as well. And I'm, I'd be happy to channel you through them. Anyway. So our relationship with the care home Stecker is very much around agency and using a, a particular model of critical dialogue that we've developed so that poverty experience jokes based on prairie for the academics in the room, which is nearly everyone. <laughs> I'm sure we've all heard of Prairie. It, it, it operationalizes Prairie so that the young Malawians in the Stecker care home, instead of having to sort of step aside whilst people took selfies, Scottish schools visiting and did jobs that they'd actually like to do, um, took agency. I'm, I'm pointing at you because I was really interested when you were saying that. Grabbed agency. There now, nobody goes in and does a job at Stecker anymore. They go in and they pay to take part in really high quality critical dialogue groups led by the young Malawians where they tell them what they want to know about Malawi. Where I think you can help is 
So we've got lots of, um, and I actually teach digital content creation and communication. So we've got some amazing films that we have managed, we have captured poverty experience people's voices. The big thing the girls want to talk about is Kasasa Fundi and the removal of the dust, which is uh, a huge problem in the area. And I am finding, uh, and I know Elisa was at a, a, a meeting that we were at where I'm still trying to recover from that actually, I was shocked at, at, at the response in the room to that. Well, anyway, I don't want to, I suppose I, I can't really say that in this forum, but I was very shocked at responses that there's nothing we can do about this. Uh, it only happens to poor people and cultural change takes a long time. I can't live with that. And I was really great. Elisa and, uh, and another group did, did speak out as women to support other women. And I would hope that all of you in your situations can also help get those voices heard. Now we have the materials, I just need you to share and do those sorts of things. So that's one of the things, selfishly, but you asked what would what we would say. I think you can really help with that and help get that access. So whereas we're really confident in our fantastic relationship with the second care home, I don't have those same links with middle class and richer people in Malawi. And, they, and, I, and I think that's where there's a stumbling block at the moment. Thank you very Sorry, much. Sorry if that was too much. No, thank you very much. I appreciate that. Thank you. Now, I'm, I'm looking at my time and I'm thinking uh, I'm going to get the torpedo myself with time. And I, I wondered whether um, I, I did not invite um, for uh, FE updates. So those colleagues with uh, partnerships, I've got Emma, you, your name is here. Yeah, and that, I've had my turn. And so you have the turn. Yeah. But Daniel, Daniela, yes, no. yes, if you could give us a quick update. And probably while you're doing that, and actually for everybody else, if you can add one little thing you bring to the table, that would be helpful too. Okay, I'll try. <laughs> um, my name is Daniela Bolle. I'm uh, working at the University of Dundee. Um, I'm in research and innovation services, so I'm really in research support, helping collaboration, research collaborations. And that's been well with what Dundee is trying to do. You've mentioned you've signed the memorandum of understanding with the six public universities in Malawi. Uh, recently, it's the Blantyre Declaration, which means we're signing up to the same sort of social purpose uh, vision that the university has. Um, and the collaboration should really be around education research and community engagement. So really interested in what you said, Peter. Um, we have in the meantime supported five Africa scholar PhD scholarships. So they are now starting with three of them, but also with people in Malawi. They are lecturers at two of these universities. And I mean, I can say that the projects are also quite interesting. So I mean, it is about um, one is assessing, mapping, and managing risks of to groundwater quality and access. That is Esther Mabadi. Um, then we have Colleen Ibuki, who is working on forest livelihoods in Malawi with a particular focus on deforestation and livelihood challenges to young people and forest communities. Um, and then we have Gavazio uh, um, Nyakapai. Yeah, so and he is working uh, in medical education and really interested in simulation uh, and local social reality to, to teach uh, medics uh, in, in the country. So these are the three that are starting now. Um, uh, people, colleagues are in Malawi at this moment, uh, working with colleagues at the universities there to develop collaborative research projects, really sort of seed funding early stage projects. So I guess what we can bring is support for these collaborations, yeah. um, and I really like um, this idea that you know we have opportunities to work with people in country to understand and work with communities there. Thank you very much. By any chance, are the university working within Malawi? They only private or, or public? No private. I think that's up next. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's been something that uh, yeah. will make the chairman very happy indeed. <laughs> If the private time involved in this discussion, they just feel they're left out. So, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, Edward, please. Is Edward, Edward Duncan? Please I see you online. I am online. Sorry, I didn't want to give you all the gift of COVID for Christmas. So, very sad not to 
be able to join you or see you, Yona. I haven't seen you since we moved back. I know, I know. <laughs> so you see, Tracy, here's the thing. So give us an update. And if you can, by a word or two, tell us what you bring to the table. Sure, no problem. So um, for anyone who doesn't know me, um, and as Yona said, I had to describe myself earlier. So I am Tracy Morrison, Professor of Environmental Health at Strathclyde. I am from Scotland, but I spent 20 years living in Malawi as well. So I'm the opposite of Yona. I went the other way, but I've now um, <laughs> made the mad decision to move back to Scotland, I think. Um, it's been really nice. Can I just say, because I'm sitting, I feel like a bit of a voyeur on the on the screen, but it's been really nice to to hear the the PhD postgraduate students um and see them engaged um in the forum today. They really are doing such fantastic work and they kind of drive a lot of the research that we all do um and and you know are such an important voice um to the table. And just to say to Alita, um homesickness is a disease and it goes the other way as well. And Seeing you on level six helps with my homesickness for Malawi too. Yes. So <laughs> it goes, it goes the other way as well. Um, so just an update in terms of what we're doing um at Strathclyde. I have other colleagues in the room as well, and I'll let um Damien maybe say a little bit more about the, the Global Renewable Center um than myself. But just to say, you know, I think this year marks about 25 years since we went back to working with Malawi and, and have continued that long term relationship um, with our higher education institutions throughout that time. We're working with multiple um, universities at the moment. Sorry, Yona, none of them private, all public. Um, um, various NGOs um, and of course, government as well, both at central um, and district level. We have a number of different focal areas. Um, and as I said, those are very much enhanced by our PhD students um, who drive our work. We're also really trying hard to, we, I think we've always tried to work in a really interdisciplinary way and a cross-sectoral way, but as a university, I think we're also trying to look at how we work across these different um, focal areas within the country as well um, to enhance what we're doing. And that means also trying to work more effectively with other higher education institutions in Scotland too, we hope. Um, so from my side, from the public health side, we have a number of continuing environmental health and One Health programmes focused um, particularly on antimicrobial resistance, waste management um, and sanitation and hygiene um, programmes in domestic, institutional and public spaces at the moment. Um, in terms of wider health and well-being, um, Tawonga and Alita have already mentioned the fantastic work they're doing, but we also have a broader adolescent health and well-being program ongoing in both Blantyre and Chinji um, at the moment. Um, we have a range of work continuing across water um, in terms of access, monitoring, technology transfer. I could see a glimpse of the room there. I could see Donald and Doug are both in the room as well, who can always say more to that um, side too. Um, and very importantly, we host the, the Scottish Government Global Renewable Centre at Strathclyde as well. And I'm just going to pass over to Damien, if I may, Yoni, and yeah, let him just right. a little, little, say a little bit more about that. Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Yeah, welcome. Uh, okay, so Global Renewable Centre, let's uh, make Global Renewable Centre in the chat rather than Global Reach. So Global Renewable Centre is a Scottish Government supported programme on a knowledge exchange, real energy between uh, Scotland, Malawi, Rwanda, and Zambia, connected with renewable energy sectors there. So we can stay on that. We've got our partners for delivering workshops um, across all four countries uh, in place. So we're going to be working with the Renewable Energy Association in each country, so Malawi and Vietnam, who um, are delivering a, a lot of really useful work in the energy sector at the moment. And then um, we've got a really strong membership that includes several academia uh, members of the academia sector and along uh, the board that represent quite well. So um, the purpose, I think, um, to be summed up quite nicely, referring back to something you said earlier, actually, which was um, the need to have those conversations and collaboration and partnership first before the projects. So that's the kind of main aim of the Global Media Centre to connect um, academia, industry, some society, and communities of practice across or well, internal in this country and then internationally. To try to form those collaborations, we hope we provide that 
platform for the use of knowledge to see that then leads on to a collaboration with the grant and the larger projects. So we're again learning about learning workshops and engagement across all countries over the next um, six months. So look out for us. If anybody's got any interests, anybody here all is very keen to be clear that this is not an engineering project. So if renewables are relevant to your work and in any way, either now or you think they will be, please get in touch because we want to be supportive of that. It's not about um, it's not all about the technology, it's very much about the the the, the supporting nature of renewables and how we can help deliver on other goals and other SDGs. And um, what about the table again the a long experience of working with community energy groups and, uh, and local energy groups in Malawi and in Scotland and working with um, quite a few of the energy focused academia uh, members in, in, in Mubat as it is now in Zuzu and Musk. So some connections there, connections in the Ministry of Energy and good relationships there too. And um, with also with some of the problems and energy focused NGOs in the land. And that would be the best. Thank, Thank you very much. <laughs> That's very helpful. Thank you very much. Uh, Connor Snowden. Yes. Hi, uh, everybody. Nice to meet you. Um, and my name is Connor I work at the uh, University of Edinburgh's Central Research Office, so supporting broad sort of international partnerships. Um, over the last few years, we've been dealing with mainly uh, working with the LMSE countries, and um, we've been very fortunate to have quite a lot of funding from uh, GCRF, formerly, which is not even stopped. But um, the role at the moment is around so new funding that's coming available through the International Science Partnership Fund, which is a new UK government fund. Um, and Scottish University will have. Uh, an allocation of money from that for supporting research with um, elements and just so um, with that, that's going to be something it's, it's just been announced last month that people are working over the next two years and that we to really support existing partnerships but also new partnerships and one of the things for me really is around um, Edinburgh has we deal with partnerships with Malawi, a generation of Malawi, one of the big um, maternal health birth cohort studies, which is coming to next, next year, but um, many of the medical sciences. So it's looking at how can we sort of branch out a little bit into some other uh, subject areas. Um, I was fortunate to go to Chancellor's College uh, earlier in the year and um, through the last of the uh, Rathus Plus funding that was available, sadly, it was also stopped. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we were discussing there about the links around potentially public health. And um, we have a fund at the moment called Principles Fund for Africa, which is part of Edinburgh's response to our history, I suppose. Um, and we are looking um, at yeah, Funding a large number of projects, you know, particularly around um, the brand brand partnership, looking at every career research, and we have one looking at you know, the flooding situations in, in southern Malawi and, and with Chancellor's uh, College and uh, uh, people there and geography, the geography department, but also looking at the experience in other countries where people have done research in, in uh, Salam and in Nairobi around flooding. So, um, yeah, to that, we're going to start showing. So, there's, it's really a, my role really to connect people out with the research, um, but you know, I'm looking for funding as well. So, we will make you know, very happy to support around funding opportunities. We mm have -hmm. a lot of European funding, which interestingly, you know, um, partners in Malawi can be full partners in European funding grants. That's always worth remembering. Um, and they also around other you know, these new UK development funding um got a lot of experience in that there's, there's a new foreign office uh, global development framework where they're in procuring research through that so there's a part of partnership you know, keeping an eye on opportunities there quite a lot of that by that too so we were very far high commission in Malawi once research done and challenged through that uh, foreign office board so 
Yeah, I'm just gonna have to chat. Nice. Can I have any questions? Thanks so much. I guess we'll do brief for the table too. So they're up a bit. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. 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 So thank you very much. It was really very useful, you know, uh, beyond what we do, but also what else we can we, we can foster moving forward. So thank you so much um, uh, uh, for that. Now, if I could uh, kindly ask our Deputy High Commissioner, uh, Mrs. Batemba, I see you online. If we could ask you to speak for for us with us, <laughs> please you're welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Matemba, and uh, let me congratulate you on your appointment as one of the trustees in the board. Congratulations, we are proud of you seeing you. you in that position. And we also want to congratulate um, Stuart for being appointed the CEO for MSP. We're looking forward to working with you. Uh, last time we came, you told us you're having an interviews, and we said we want you to get this position. So we're excited. <laughs> <laughs> we're very excited that you got the position, and are uh, looking forward to working with you as as the embassy. Um, also excited to see some students that are in 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 the room that I, I met with the last time we were there attending the AGM, the Peter and friends. We're so excited to see you. You are representing Malawi and please represent it very well. And uh, when people are seeing you are seeing Malawi and whatever you're doing, people are relating to what Malawi is all about. And uh, we as a mission, we want to appreciate the relationship that has been always there between Scotland and Malawi. It's been a long relationship, very cordial and very helpful. And we've seen how uh, Scotland comes in and always is handy when Malawi is in need and he always lead uh, uh, by example. And we've set a good example even to the, uh, to the uh, wider community and how uh, you can come in and help, uh, especially when it comes to climate justice. We really want to appreciate that. And coming at the conversation, which is uh, on the table today, we. As, as, as Dr. Matemba had indicated that we've been discussing uh, for a while regarding how we can, we can make all institutions or high institutions benefit from, from the table. And I was, I was uh, hoping maybe there could also be a discussion, but I think I've, I've seen the, 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 the topics or, or the direction of the discussion. I was hoping that maybe we'd also discuss on the issues to do with the uh, 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 degradation of the Malawian qualifications, but maybe it's 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 not for this forum, but I think it's something that we also yeah. discussed because we've noted that um, some of our students from Malawi are, are not able to access uh, scholarships to do their masters or even PhD because of the issues that uh, Malawian qualifications have been downgraded. And that's something that we also discussing. And I was hoping that maybe this could also arise from this, uh, this forum, but I think we can take it up further in another, in another forum. But um, just to, uh, uh, to appreciate what is happening, uh, the scholarships that, that is Malawi is benefiting, we know, most of our Malawians are, are benefiting from the scholarships that have been given by the Scottish Scottish government. We may not be able to have all the data here. I think last time when we were in Scotland, we were encouraging uh, our students to register with the embassy so that at least we know we have the data in our system. So we know who is studying what, and that would also help us because one of the things that Malawi government is looking for is a transfer of skills so that we know who is studying what, we know who is doing what. So when we need uh, expertise or we need technical uh, technical help, we should be able to tap knowledge from, from our Malawians. So please just to encourage you. I know Peter Lege start with us, but the rest of the students were yet to get your 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 uh, database. So I think maybe we would appreciate that. And maybe before I proceed. I would, I would like to ask uh, maybe Levan Sembreka, who is a uh, coordinator for um, uh, Diaspora, but also he's, a, he's the one who is responsible for all 
development issues in Malawi. And so I would want you maybe to come in and say a word also. Levrand Sembereka, are you there? Thank you, DHC, uh, for your kind sentiments. Uh, um, just to appreciate the conversation currently going on, I think these kind of conversa conversations are the very uh, a nerve center of uh, social economic development of the country. As 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 a nascent developing country, Malawi requires uh, a kind of brainstorming of this nature. I appreciate the challenges and the opportunities that were raised here. Um, I appreciate the challenges and the opportunities that have been raised here by uh, students uh, currently in Scotland. And uh, we look forward to picking some of those discussions um, in our ongoing discussions with our colleagues in Scotland. And don't, and thank you, uh, Dr. Matimba, once again, you uh, for your passion uh, in as far as uh, education is concerned. We, we would, uh, would want to encourage more people to pick up some of these things as we move forward. Um, Currently, we, there is a study Le going Evan on. Sembleka, can I cut you? Are you able to, to switch on your, your video? My network, you. my network has a problem. <laughs> so I'm, is it? I'm sorry, my, my, my network has a problem. I um, see. Yeah, so I'm minimizing it. So yeah, in, 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 in a way, currently we are doing a study. Malawi is doing a study on uh, diaspora. Um, uh, putting up instruments for socioeconomic development in Malawi and the participation of the diaspora. I'll be sharing with uh, some of the team uh, uh, those instruments. Um, thank you once again, and uh, I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you, David. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, I think thank you so much, uh, Reverend Sembleka, uh, for those sentiments and and indeed, as you've said, I think the issues that have been raised from this uh 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 forum, we should be able to pick up some of them and see how best we can work with our 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 Malawian in 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 Scotland. Uh, I think basically that's what I would say. Uh, there's a number of uh, a number of people joining from the mission. I don't know if they might want to say a word or so. Let me not uh, 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 stop them from uh, uh, saying hi and 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 saying a word to the to 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 the uh, to the people in this forum. Uh, Violet Dua, you may want to come in. Violet, are you there? Yes, Madam Dixie, I'm here just to appreciate. Uh, you Scotland. might wish to sit on your video as well. I guess you can see me. I'm not sure. <laughs> I have a, a light at the background. But just to appreciate uh, the relationship that we have with Scotland, and everything else that the partnerships are able to do for Malawi and Scotland in the education sector as well. And as you have already said, uh, Madam DHC, that is all that I would say for now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dua. Yes, indeed. Uh, Madam Dua, Madam, are you there? Okay. She has finished. Okay. So, so basically, Dr. Machea is the people that he joined me as a mission who've set up a committee on education because I think for us, we think education is one of the things that we really need to, to highlight and make some strides and see how best we can help Malawians because we, we, we think once we have an educated population, we should be able to deal with some of the issues that we're struggling with. Some of these things that we're struggling with is because of high literacy levels. But if we can have, uh, uh, we can 
make some progress on education. I think we should be able to make some strides and 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 and, and contribute towards the development of our country. So, the team that uh, joined in this committee, this forum, is the committee that was set up as 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 a mission to look into all issues to do with education. Of course, the two members were not able to join us. Kondwa and Itopa is and Teddy Sisi, they are not available. They are both on holiday, but next time they should be able to join. So if there's anything to do with education issues and all that, you can reach out to any of us. We should be able to, to come in and all that. All, all opportunities that are available, please do let us know so that we can also share with uh, Malawians and especially uh, maybe just also to, to speak to our, uh, our, our students who are there. As you're on the ground, you may be able to see some opportunities that are available. You may be able to see some scholarships, links and all that. Please do share with us so that we can also share to, to Malawians who can benefit from this because we really want to uh, to ensure that people access opportunities as much as, as they can. So as in basically, that's what I would say. Thank you so much, Dr. Matimba, for inviting us to join this forum. We are so grateful. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam High Commissioner. And also hearing some of the uh, comments that have come from your office and some of the colleagues there. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that, giving them much wider context. No, no. She raised, you've raised an important point about the Navic issue and the issue of the downgrading of Malawian uh, university degrees. We have had this discussion before in one of the forums here at the Strasbourg University. So we've had this discussion before. And, I, and I've had other discussions since then with various individuals. And I think what's lacking now is money to initiate a project that can take forward these discussions. Because these discussions have been done. My initial report was it's already published, and I'm told it's widely shared with, even within government circles, which is good. And I'm really glad to see the High Commissioner, uh, High Commission rather, taking an interest in this. And I, I don't know whether our colleagues from Malawi are fully aware that Malawian uh, degrees, not all the time, but sometimes they are downgraded. So when students from Malawi want to apply to come to the UK to do either a master's degree or a PhD, they are told sorry. And some of them even already own a scholarship, a common school scholarship. And then they were told, oh, we have checked the university that you want to go to have told us that your degree is not equivalent to the, 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 you know, the UK university where you're going to, and therefore we're withdrawing this scholarship and really I seen cases like that is very tragic to see that. And then I just feel that it's something that we can do. This is an easy fix. You know, all of those things where you cry to say it's an easy, easy fix. Why are we here still? <laughs> this can fix this quite easily. But for whatever reason, we, we, we haven't managed to do that particular fixing yet. And I hope that this further discussion, Stuart, with sort of a partnership, we're able to do something just to move forward this and have it done so that everyone else can have an equal opportunity uh, because our minor degrees are, are comparable, not only to the UK. This problem is existing elsewhere too. So in my research, I'm, I'm, I'm big, that's not only in the UK, but also in other places where they would you know, question the, you know, the quality of the minor degrees, and then they would reject students on that basis. It's a tragedy to hear that. Now, the issue at that point I'll make about it is that for those who have managed to get admission to UK universities, and when you say there's a problem, say which problem? I got I got admitted <laughs> because the issue is quite nuanced, actually. It's not quite straightforward. It's a nuanced issue. Some universities go through NARIC, others don't. So those that don't go through NARIC, they just accept you straight out. You apply to them, they say you can't. But if you go through NARIC, NARIC will flag up and say, sorry, the Malayan uh, first degree is equivalent to a UK higher national diploma. A Malawian master's is equivalent to an ordinary uh, an ordinary uh, bachelor's degree, which is a three year, which then you, you can't you know qualify you to enter to a PhD program in many universities, including my own universities, will not accept Malawian students on that basis. So this is quite a serious issue. So I'm glad that about the Internal Commission has also picked it up, and, and in government sake, well, there's some initial discussions around this. So all of us together here, I think there's something we can do to deal with, in my view, quite a simple matter, really, uh, to, to solve. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been here for quite a while, and thank you for your participation so far. We are edging towards the end of our meeting, but I just thought that before we uh, go towards closing, if I could all open up the forum for people online, people here, if there are things and issues that you'd like to raise or make a comment on the things that have been discussed already, especially I'm more interested to hear more on our colleagues online who have been quiet and listening to us throughout. 
you can probably give this five, six minutes an open discussion, if that's okay. Science is not always golden. <laughs> so I was told. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, just to say that we have been working with the private university, the Catholic University of Morales. Yeah. So it's a private yeah. work with them. We were delighted that it was the first recognized research project and the president was Malawi when he came down to do the degree program. Uh, we mentioned it uh, and it was on Malawi TV. So uh, just to say that we, we've made some of those in that respect, but we worked with Kuhn Heads and University of Malawi in terms of capacity building. Mm -hmm. And thanks to that, the, the, the lecturers have now got promotions in, in, in state universities. So the capacity is quite small in the Catholic University, but it gave the opportunities for those working there to move into higher positions in other public universities. <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Well, that's a good example, isn't it, of involving the private ones as well. Uh, yeah, thank you so much. Any other questions or comments, even online? Something that is important is burning within us and we want to, to kind of share. Okay. If nobody's saying anything, I'm interested in what you were saying about how we can get Malawian degrees to articulate yeah. into the UK. We had a huge problem when GIFT was coming. I mean, yeah. that was just an undergraduate level. Yeah. And in the end, because we're a tiny university, yeah. and I you know, was personally involved, we managed to get Mobile on a six-month visa. He did one module and aced it, and that then showed that he was going to be able to succeed and he was then able to continue to, to finish his master's at, at QMU as well. But it was that idea of this sort of how we can create something that enables yep. people to articulate. Um, and what ideas did you come, did, was your report just saying this is what's happening no. or was it saying this is what could happen as yeah. well? Yeah, the end of that report. And by the way, uh, Stuart has kindly shared that it's on the link there. And if you want, in this context of that partnership, that they have that original report that we produced. And, and I think to uh, Emma, to your point, no, towards the end of that report, we make recommendations uh, and how this can be done. And these recommendations were the result of the initial research we had done. We've spoken to NARI colleagues, for example, and they told us what the sticking points were. And on the basis of that, we're able to make some recommendations. One of the things I'll mention quite quickly was that they pointed out that the Malawi education system um, is, is less one year to the UK or one, yeah. one and a half years to the UK. So in other words, our students in Malawi, and I, when I went to Malawi in, in July this year, I was speaking to Nche on this particular issue, by the way. And I said to them, so we are aware of it, what are you doing about it? Ah, but they are aware of it. And, and I did raise this serious point with them. And I was saying to them that this one year gap, because our children, for those of you not so familiar with the Malawian education system, they write the MSc, all of us wrote it. I wrote it, everybody in my writes it. But the MSc is equivalent to all what they level here in the UK, or which is in, in Scotland, which is equivalent to uh, highers. You know, this is equivalent to the highers. Yeah, all of them. So, in that sense, there's that some countries in Africa, Botswana, we, which are, we have taught and have lived, and they, they have done that, they have reached that one year. In Tanzania, they've done the same, and so on and so forth, because there is this one year that's lacking. But I think, of course, this requires much more deeper discussion, involvement of government policymakers who can actually make the changes. We, as scholars and researchers, can point out the problem, but we need our friends on the hand to, to say that like, this is what we can actually uh, practically do. So these are ongoing issues, but it's a concern and a continued worry as well. Um, Tracy, I see your hand up. Hi, Yona. Yeah. I guess, and this is something that we've discussed before, but I guess it's just trying to find an effective way of doing this. Um, we all do great things in Malawi, and a lot of what underpins that specific research is also capacity building with colleagues who are not in Scotland, who are sitting in Malawi as well, and are looking to climb that academic ladder as well in terms of publications and, and work that they're doing. And I, I still feel that we could do a lot better as Scottish 
institutions at working together on leveraging the funds that we have available for that capacity building to open opportunities to colleagues who might be on you know, a University of Glasgow project because we're a Strathclyde project doing something similar. I mean, a lot of the underpinning capacity building around writing publications, around writing proposals, ethics applications, um, you know, just the general improving your research skills um, side of things. And I still wonder if there's a role this um, forum can play in, in trying to improve communication between our institutions about what we're doing, where and when. I don't know if that's having a focal person, a contact person at each institution that we feel we can get in touch with and they can network across academics working there or not. Um, I don't have necessarily the answer, but I think it's something um, that is worth a few of us coming together to kind of have a brainstorm on and think about how we can do better on that. And maybe part of the responsibility, though, isn't the always, it's ours. That's what <laughs> I mean, know. Emma. I'm talking yeah, about no, us here in Scotland, yeah. yeah. Sorry, I thought you meant people in Malawi, but this idea of, like, we used to have, when we had lots of money, yeah. a pre-sessional course, and students who didn't quite articulate with the requirements, they had to do a three-month pre-sessional course, right. which taught them all these things Tracy's talking about. Now, maybe every university doesn't have the funding to do that, but as Tracy says, I'm sure between all of us, we could have a pre-sessional three months course that could be a requirement for people coming from particular countries or something like that. GIFT did that, sorry, I keep going yeah. about this personal experience, but it was very insightful. Um, he did that and my goodness, he completely, it gave him the confidence he needed. It did transform him from someone who wasn't didn't really have an education that enabled him to be critical. I think that was the issue. Yeah. That it, you know, it took him from someone that was quite descriptive to somebody who was very critical. And I think we have the expertise of what's what it is if you've done this research. So maybe that is a, a great idea, yeah. Tracy, that we come together. Yeah. So yeah, and I think there is that side, Emma, of building for people to be able to come and do programs here. But it's also about our collaborators who will sit in Malawi and continue to sit in Malawi as well, who also need that capacity building and things too. So if I have a program in adolescent health and well-being, it is underpinned by improving the research capacity of KUHES and MUBAS, for example. And then University of Glasgow also have, you know, the learning labs and things as well and have funding to build capacity and research at KUHES. Then we're all, we're, we're in danger of spending money on doing the same things. And we need to have better collaboration in the Scottish end about how we're making best use of those funds in the settings that we're working in. But yes, I agree using it for, for student improvement as well is, is really valuable. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, colleagues, it's been really wonderful uh, to have this moment together and to have this sort of discussions and these issues that, that have been raised. All the issues that have been raised here and all the points that have been made here are valid. And I think it's worthwhile for us as a sort of a partnership to take forward some of the action points. And I'll ask Stuart if Stuart will give us a quick a quick summary, what would be our action points based on the various discussions that have been going on? <laughs> I hope that we'll be taking the minutes. Thank you, Chair. It's been a, a rich discussion and um, brilliant to, to kick it off hearing from the first time experience of a few inspiring um, Malawian uh, postgrad students and a clear theme of, of isolation um, and much much better need for a transition um but also acknowledgement of, of the brilliant support that, that you've had from some of your supervisors and, and and others so i think there's a piece of work for the scotland malawi partnership and to do in collaboration with the malawi scotland partnership and the international offices of universities mm -hmm. um who uh, many of them do a brilliant job with with whom we with some close contacts to look at a, a kind of pipeline i suppose of uh, perhaps um, Malawians who studied in Scotland being able to share their experience with Malawians in Malawi um, before they come over um, with some thoughts about what to expect and to be able to answer some questions, perhaps in collaboration with MASP for Malawi Scotland Partnership. Um, and then coming over uh, uh, here and being introduced to the Association of Malawians in Scotland, yeah. as Dr. Matemba um, mentions, 
um, and and um, licensed with Charlie and Tuckle, Charlie's um, uh, prayer, prayer group, um, and also the very warm welcome from Scotland and Malawi partnership. So I think there's something for, for us there. Um, the the downgrading of Malawi in degrees is, is some years since we received a letter back when Dr. Matemba wrote to Narek uh, on this issue. And I think uh, very well worth refreshing that and sharing again the, the latest findings of uh, Dr. Matemba and Dr. Matika's um, yeah. re report uh, on that together. So we'll we'll look at that. And uh, I suppose perhaps related to, to the first point about working with the international offices, um, Professor Tracy Morris's great point about uh, linkages between our institutions in Scotland. One of the key things that we exist for as, as a membership organisation is to help map who's doing what, where, and with whom in, in Malawi. We've heard the chair's point about uh, remembering private universities as well as as well as public. Um, so I, I think that there's lots of scope there, um, building on Tracy's point around capacity building and uh, working together. The 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 whole being greater than the sum of the part. Mm -hmm. Taking that that approach. Um, <clears throat> so I think these these are probably the three kind of uh, main actions. And um, Dorothea um, has been uh, uh, taking some some additional notes, and we'll we'll pour through these uh, together, and we'll have the recording of the event for, for any actions I've missed. But I, I just also like to thank our chair very much, Dr. Yanamatamba, for leading us through this process of what I think has been a very lively and informative and useful uh, discussion and update. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Stuart, uh, for those sort of points. And I think these are the uh, take home points for us, all of us who've gathered here today and online as well. And I'm aware that Chad, sorry, Chad, <laughs> you're, not, you're not feeling well today, but uh, it's good to see you there. Uh, are you able to say hello if you're all online? Can <laughs> you say hello to us? Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, sorry. It was mostly like I, I told Stuart yesterday, I do have FOMO, fear of missing out. And sorry, I couldn't be with all of you this morning. Um, I was looking forward to this morning's event, but uh, yes, I've I've enjoyed, uh, yeah, the dynamicism of the discussions this morning. So it's fantastic. Thank you. Thank you so much. Chad is the, the interim deputy CEO of the School of Bio Partnership. So and we went very close together. So he was the one helping with the organization, but uh, COVID decided otherwise. <laughs> All right. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. In the absence of any other comments uh, or views from what we've been talking about the last two hours, probably about two hours or so, I would like to declare this meeting closed, but not the conversation. This meeting is closed, but not the conversations. Let the conversations begin. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs>